Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome to another trivia video. All right, I did my first trivia video a few weeks ago, and it looks like you all had a lot of fun with it. And I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video so you can check that one out. And that one was really easy. You'd do pretty well if you have taken like a 10th grade world history course. So when looking for another one, this one caught my eye because it said hard history. So I'm excited to check this out. All right, so make sure to play along with me and let me know your score down below. Let's get started. So these are always interesting because it can uh, show a lot about what I know. I pride myself as a history teacher and somebody who loves history of knowing about a, a wide variety of topics and time periods. Now, what that leads, though, to is me not being an expert on any one subject. I feel like I know a little bit about a lot of things rather than a lot about a very few amount of things. That's my style. I like to to go that way, but I know a lot of you like to invest in specific topics. So let's see how we do. History trivia, trivia questions read out loud. Okay. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment saying I subscribe. The original video is linked down below. Your comment. Especially if you want to do this without me until the for end. some reason, play Something along with me. A bonus question that only 50% of people get right. Oh, really? Okay. One, in which year? Was D-Day A, 1944, B, 1941, C, 1942, or D, 1945? <laughs> 1944. June 6, 1944. The answer is A, 1944. Yep. Remember, that's very close to the what's going to be the end of the war. Um, interesting because, like, United States, you know, joins up. If you want to look at it from that perspective, of course, the day had um, uh, the British as well as Canadians, you know, uh, involved with that, too. But, you know, Pearl Harbor happening like three years before that. Um, but United States not getting in the ground in, in Europe, although that was not what Pearl Harbor was about, you know, years later. Because it was, uh, it was a, a very difficult thing to organize, and they weren't even 100% positive it was going to be successful. All right, anyway, I don't want to talk too much. Two, which ancient civilization used to worship turkeys as gods? Um, a, the Incan yeah. civilization. Incan? B, the Chinese <laughs> Incan. civilization. C, the ancient Greek civilization. Or D, the Maya civilization. I should probably pause in between them if I want to, you know, think out. Um, turkeys are indigenous to North America. Um, and so I'm going to go probably to the Maya as being more northern than Inca. The answer is D, the Maya civilization. I didn't know it went that Three. far south. Which famous conqueror was attacked by a large group of rabbits? A, Julius Caesar. B, Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> okay. C, Cyrus the Great. Or D, Alexander the Great. All right, I don't know for sure. It was attacked. That sounds like a Napoleon thing. The answer is B, <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte. Or, I didn't know that one. Which was just the 17th like a Napoleon century thing. privateer, Captain Morgan's first name? A, Henry. B, Alexander. C, Benjamin. Or D, Thomas. Privateer, another name for a... a a pirate. I think it's Henry. Pretty sure it's Henry. The answer is A. Henry. It's a, a pirate that is an by operation and paid by dining a utensil employed by a used government. To be considered sacrilegious. A. Chopsticks. Sacrilegious. B, knives. C. Forks. Or D. Spoons. No, I didn't know there was one that would be considered sacrilegious and by whom. So I'm trying to think of just like utility here. I wouldn't think like chopsticks. Coming out of China or something would be like like um, sacrilegious knives. You just you have to have knives. Imagine not having knives. I'm gonna say forks, and for that same reason, like spoon, like it's so essential. There's no way you could make it sacrilegious. Like you can you can eat without a fork. So I'm gonna go with that, just based on utility. The answer is C. <laughs> okay. Forks. I mean, it's a bunch of little knives, right, on your utensil. Six. Which American president is in the Wrestling Hall of Fame? A. Jimmy Carter B. Abraham Lincoln C. Theodore Roosevelt Or D. Franklin D. Roosevelt 
Um, I was honored to be able to be a guest on Mr. Beach channel that was about uh, interesting things about about presidents. And uh, one of the ones I brought in uh, was was this, I believe in that video. Um, Abraham Lincoln is. Multiple presidents were into wrestling, though. But I think Abraham Lincoln's the yeah, he's in. The, yeah, Abraham Lincoln. He's in it. And he fought werewolves. Seven. Which American president died from eating too many cherries? A. Zachary Taylor. Oh. <laughs> B. Benjamin Harrison. C. Franklin Pierce. Or D. Grover Cleveland. <laughs> At first, I was thinking they meant like, like, like choked, like it was a choking hazard, and they died from it. I don't remember. Taylor. The answer is A. Okay. Zachary that was, Taylor. That was that was a guess. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. In which year were slaves emancipated in America? Oh. A, 1868. B. 1863. C. 1865. Or D. 1861. Okay, I. This is kind of like a trick question in kind of a way because Emancipation Proclamation um, happened uh, during the actual Civil War um, in 1863, but it it didn't it didn't uh, free all slaves. It was just uh, slaves in rebellion states, um, and it was kind of a political thing to to try to provide more kind of like justification, I guess you would say, of of for you know fighting the south because i guess you could have made the the argument that up to this point the war wasn't really officially about slavery and looking in retrospect the emancipation proclamation is often seen as like the thing that has clarified that it was about it but the interesting thing is if you were not a uh, a state in open rebellion the Emancipation Proclamation uh, didn't necessarily take place because there were states that had slavery that didn't necessarily join the Confederacy. Um, I know there's a lot of irony in that, but anyway, so I, I'm going to say they're probably thinking 1863, but really it's with the end, with, with actually like the amendment, 13th Amendment, where you're actually going to get it, and that's going to be later. 65 with the war ending. The answer so, is yeah, B. That's what I figured they would use. Nine. Who was the first Prime Minister of Canada? A. John Abbott. B. Mackenzie Bow. C. John A. Macdonald. Or D. Alexander Mackenzie. I have no idea. I, I have no idea. Sorry, Canadians. Let's just. Uh, the answer is C. John yeah. A. Macdonald. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, even, I didn't even get it. My guess. Ten. The terrorist attacks of 9/11 took place on which day of the week? A. Wednesday B. Thursday C. Monday or D. Tuesday I don't remember this. It was a school day because, or a weekday, because it was a school day for me. And I remember um, I, uh, when I first, you know, the, the first plane had hit, when I first learned about that, it was before I left for school in the morning. It was, um, I was like getting my bowl of cereal or something real quick, then the TV happened to be on and I saw that. And the, the first plane had already hit. And then it was during that that I saw the second plane hit while I was watching, I saw that live. And then during the school day, we were, um, we were watching it. Um, in fact, my first period teacher uh, was an active um, Army National Guard uh, member, and he was just like he, he he didn't attempt to teach at all at all. He just had the had it on. He had the TV on in class, and then was watching it. I think in a in a like a faculty room with um, some of the other science teachers uh, at that time. He actually ended up. Um, not finishing out the year, he got called into duty and left that year, and um, ends up coming back and was was safe, you know, and uh, so that was great. But anyway, yeah, I don't know exactly which day it was, so I don't even really want to guess. <laughs> I'll just put that as a miss for me. <laughs> the answer is D. I'm not gonna Tuesday. count. I'm not gonna count guesses. Tuesday, okay. Eleven. Which was the most commonly used weapon by Egyptians? A. Bow and arrow. B. Spear. C. Sword. Or D. Dagger. Okay, this is interesting because, and what I can try to infer from this uh, is, even though 
I mean, most commonly, I, I don't know, like statistic what that be, but I'm going to use some inferences here because uh, metallurgy in early on Egyptian culture was not really thing. They didn't use iron tools um, early on, therefore iron weapons. So I'm thinking probably not a sword or a dagger. I mean, spear, I guess, could make sense with that if you're talking about stone tips. Um, the, but the the, the uh, metallurgy, I believe, came in with the Hittites when they came into Egypt. So, but the Egyptians were also known for being among the earliest people to develop chariots, which they use bow and arrows with. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with bow and arrow. I can I guess see it being spear, but I'm gonna go with bow and arrow. A. The answer is A. Bow and right. arrow. I mean, I, I could have even Twelve. gone with either one. In which one. country was Pope John Paul II born? A. United Kingdom. B. Poland. C. Germany. Or D. Belgium. The, these type of like Pope origination questions can be kind of like hard for me because um, the the name that they take on is not necessarily representative of where it's not representative of where they come from so like john paul you'd be like oh that sounds like a very like english name or something but that's not the case uh because popes are from all over you know the world you have an argentine one you know for example now so um i want to say he was polish though i, th I want to say yeah I, I think he was polish The okay. answer is B. I don't Poland. remember his real name, but I just wanted to. I Daddy, thought I had heard that. Who was Hitler's second in command? A. Heinrich Himmler. B. Hermann Göring. C. Joseph Goebbels. Or D. Martin Bormann. This is. Mm, I wonder what the criteria is of this. Like, you know what I mean? Like. It's like, did he declare an heir? But that's not how it was all supposed to supposed to go. All the all three of these guys, or, or, or four of these guys, were close, especially like Goebbels and Himmler and Goering. Because um, it, it also a, a, a one you could say was like Hess, but like for what I'm trying to think, they would want I, or Goering or Himmler. I would. I, I guess I would say Goering. But I don't know what criteria they're trying to say. I'll be honest. The Himmler, answer is okay. A, Heinrich Himmler. Hmm. Oh, again, I wonder what the criteria 14. would be. In which year was Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, assassinated? Years. A, 1967. B, 1964. C, 1968. Or D, 1965. Man, the, the, the 60s were so wild with assassinations in the United States. We had JFK, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, you had uh, Malcolm X, you know, when you're talking about people that were kind of part of this movement. RFK, um, Robert Kennedy, who was running for president. Um, the exact year. So I would notice if I was still teaching my uh, U.S. history classes, I think I would know this. So I'm a little bit rusty on it. I want to say... 67 or 68 because rfk he he famously it was during his campaign he made the speech during his campaign that actually broke the news to a lot of people and it was televised he had heard about it and um so i'm gonna ah, 67 or 68 i'm gonna say 67. okay one one year later okay. 1968 15. Which liquid did the Romans once use as mouthwash? <laughs> A. Snake blood. Those are all awful. B. Urine. C. Well, no, ocean apple juice. Water. Apple juice would be good. Or D. Apple juice. I actually think I think this one was urine. I think they drank their own pee. Oh, the answer so is gross. B. Urine. <laughs> what they want to know though is how how how, how widespread was that? Oh, people were so gross in history. I, they're, they're probably gonna say, are people gonna say the same thing though in like hundreds of years, thousands of years of us about us now? 16. Who was the first woman appointed to the Supreme Court? A. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. B. Sonia Sotomayor. C. Sotomayor. Eleanor Kagan. Or D. Sandra Day O'Connor. 
Um, Sotomayor was more, uh, was earlier. Ginsburg, man, she was in forever. I want to say O'Connor. From, was that Reagan? The answer is D. Administration. Sandra Day Reagan? 17. Correct me if I'm wrong. Who was the one. wealthiest pirate in recorded history? A. Captain Samuel Bellamy. B. Edward Teach, a.k.a. Blackbeard. C. Sir Henry Morgan. Or D. Henry mm. Every, a.k.a. Long Ben. Long Ben. Um, I don't I don't know off the top of my head and how they quantify this. I know like like he's not on the list, but um uh oh my gosh. The the guy, Queen's Pirate, oh my gosh, why am I why am I blanking on him? I talk about him all the time. Queen's Pirate uh, defeated the Armada, uh guy from Uncharted. Oh my gosh. It's killing me. Okay, let me know down below. But he um he uh had the biggest ransoms and would and would you know pull, uh pillage those those spanish ships and um and had a huge bounty on his head for like tens of millions of dollars he's on the list here gosh dang it it's going to come back to me you're all furiously doing it okay anyway blackbeard i don't know about bell i don't know who bellamy is I, I've never heard of Long Ben and Morgan. They already mentioned, so I'm just gonna try to use some de de deduction there. I'm gonna go Blackbeard. The answer is oh, okay. A. Yeah, I didn't Captain know. Captain <laughs> Samuel Bellamy. Eighteen. Which year did the Japanese attack Pearl Harbor? A. 1943. B. 1940. C. 1941. Or D, mm -hmm. 1942. Day that will live it in for me. December, 1941. The answer is C, 1941. Sir Francis Drake. If you already typed it, it means you typed it before I came back to it. Francis Drake, Queen's Pirate. <laughs> 19. Which American president opened a whiskey distillery after his presidency? A, George Washington. B, John Adams. C. Thomas Jefferson or D. James Madison. I don't know. I don't know this. Washington. No. Jefferson. I mean, he was kind of businessman. He was more like agriculturalist. I could see. I guess Madison or Adams. I'm gonna go Adams. They love whiskey up north there. The answer oh, is Washington. A. George <laughs> Washington. Wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. Which is the deadliest war in human history? A. Mexican-American War B. <laughs> World War II C. The Revolutionary War Or D. World War I Revolutionary War. It's very American-centric, right? Because uh, somebody might be like, Revolutionary War? There's a lot of Revolutionary Wars, right? Uh, not Mexican-American War, not Revolutionary War. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to go by probably like most casualties. Not necessarily like a percentage or something like that, so... but. I assume that's what they're wanting. So World War II. The answer is B, World War II. 21. In which city and state did Rosa Parks refuse to give up her bus seat? Uh, more civil a, rights era Montgomery, stuff. Montgomery, Alabama. B, Little Rock, Arkansas. Alabama. C, Birmingham, Alabama. Or D, Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. Montgomery, because uh, famous bus or boycotts there. The answer is A, Montgomery, Alabama. 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 I even said Alabama. 22. Alabama, Alabama right? Um, very much a, a very much an epicenter of the civil rights movement. Um, when you hear, you also have like the Birmingham jail, uh, you know, situation for uh, Martin Luther King Jr. But yeah, Alabama was one of those hot spots. Which is the only American president to be impeached twice? A, Richard Nixon. B, Bill Clinton, C, Donald Trump, or D, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Reagan. <laughs> uh, all right. So Nixon avoided it basically by resigning. Bill Clinton was impeached. Um, and also remember, impeached does not mean removed from office. There's another vote that has to happen. But impeachment like kind of puts it on the table, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, but yeah, Clinton had that, uh, but that was only once. It's recent history. It's actually uh, Donald Trump. 
not Reagan. The answer is C, Donald Trump. 23. Which year did Mexico gain independence from Spain? A. 1810 B. 1805 C. 1821 Or D. 1809 Mm-hmm. Um, I believe this one's 1810. The answer is A. Sometimes it can be easy to kind of mix up. You'll get you'll get that, but then also like the Mexican Revolution as well. It's a, a, um, early 19th century, 24. very transformative. Who was the first Roman for emperor? For Mexico. A. First Roman Tiberius. emperor. Tiberius. B. Nero. C. Claudius. Or D. Augustus. Augustus. It's actually a title he took. His his name was Octavian. Augustus is what he'll be known as when he becomes the emperor, though. The answer is though. D. Augustus. 25. That's what they're looking for. Which year was Malcolm X assassinated? A. 1963. B. 1961. C. 1965. Or D. 1964. Mentioned him earlier. Um, I don't remember the exact year for this one. Malcolm X, I brought him, you know, brought him up with other assassinations here of the 60s. I'm going to go... Oh, was he before or after Kennedy's? I want to say it was after Kennedy's assassination, 63. So I'm going to go 64, 65. Let's go, let's go 65. The answer is C, oh, okay. 1965. Half, half guess. I knew it was got to be right. Bonus. Which branch of military did former President Ronald Reagan serve in? A. Army. Hmm. B. Navy. C. Air Force. Or D. Marines. I'm going to say because it'd be like World War II era when he goes in and everyone serves. So I'm going to, and with the, the biggest majority being Army, I'm just going to play the percentages on this and say Army. The answer is A, Army. How did you do? Comment below your score. All right, I don't remember how many I missed. You guys could probably do that for me, but um, you heard me as along the way. All right, how did you all do? What'd you think of this test? Um, I think this is a lot of fun. Hey, if you want me to do more of these, please let me know. Um, you know, obviously I can see your views, but it, it's a lot more helpful to me to see what you guys say. Um, and yeah, again, that's that's a uh, lot more helpful. This is a lot of fun for me. All right, final thoughts about it. All right, so I think these are good to do every once in a while. It kind of keeps your brain fresh doing doing trivia like this. Plus, you learn a lot of stuff, but it's a great way to kind of keep going without having to spend a lot of time going back to source materials from history. So, uh, anyways, these are a lot of fun. Let me know how you did. Let me th uh, know what you what you thought of this. This said hard history. I could see that being hard if you were not kind of like a history buff. And even with me, like I teach so many of these different things. So many of those are details that, you know, don't necessarily come across as important in a curriculum, you know what I mean, but are more just kind of fun facts, I guess you would say. All right, with that, Thanks for everyone. Uh, again, the original video down below. Share it with other people, you know, see how they do. And we'll see you all next time. Bye.